going to teach you some basics of Photoshop. And I'm, today on part one, I'm going to show you some ways that you can edit your photos. So yes, I hope that you will enjoy this tutorial. I'm using Adobe Photoshop CS4, but you can use any version of Photoshop. So first, I'll show you how to, to edit a photo. So first you need to open a photo. So you go up to File, and then you go Open, but a shortcut's just Apple O. And then you can scroll and find a photo that you might want to use. And I'll just use this one of Elsie. And then you click Open. And now it's just opening. Yeah, so the first thing that I will show you is just a little way you can make the photo change colour and look a bit more brighter. And this is called the curves. So you go up to image, adjustments, and then you go to curves. And the curves just make it lighter or darker. So you come over to here to this flowchart looking thingy. And you can make it lighter by dragging up or darker by dragging down. So I like to make it lighter at the top and then come down and make it darker. Because that just makes the colour look a bit better. Then you click OK when you're done. But if you don't like it, you just click Cancel. OK. You can also have actions over the side which do the whole thing for you. And you can download these off the internet. But I won't show you any of them today. Now this is a way that you can do black and white. You go Image, Adjustments, Hue, Slash, Saturation and you drag the saturation all the way down to the bottom and then if you want you can change that but it doesn't really make a difference and then when you're done you just click OK but if you don't like it you go edit step backwards or you can just do command Z OK now I'll show you how to crop your image so that it can be a smaller resolution for your blog or your website or whatever you're using it for. So you come over to this square icon and each camera you take a photo with has a different size photo but mine is either a 4 by 6 or a 6 by 4 inches. So this photo is a 6 inches by 4 inches and so I'll just type it in and the resolution is a the bigger, the bigger the number, the bigger photo size. So if I want to just do a small one for my blog, I might do 72 or 100. But if I want to do a better quality one, 150. But the best size for printing photos out is 300. And then once you've typed in what size you want your photo to be, you come over to the top corner and you drag it and you can either just drag it all the way or you can crop it in a bit smaller then you just double click and down here in the bottom left corner is the percentage of the photo you can see so if you want to see the whole photo up big you can go to 50 or 100 percent now I'll show you how to put words onto your photo you come down to the text, to the T symbol down the side and then you go up to the top and you can choose colours and you can choose any colours you like um, but if you want to choose a colour of the photo you can use the colour picker and you click and then it cho chooses the colour then you just click OK when you've chosen the colour you want but I think I might choose the yellow on Elsie's dress and then you can come up here and change the font so I might choose this font and you can also change the size of your words so I might just do that one and then you have to drag a text box and you can type in what you want to say so I might say pretty Elsie and then when you finish you click the little arrow button at the top which is how you move it around so I'll move it up here where we can read it. And then if you want your image to be a JPEG, 
which is all the layers flattened together, you have to flatten it. But if you just want it to be like a Photoshop document so you can come back and change it, you leave the layers together. So to flatten it, you go layer, flatten. So then it all becomes one layer. And then, see, you can't move the words around anymore because it's all put together. So if you don't like where the words are, you'll have to go edit step backwards and move the words again or anything else you've put on. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. See you next time in part two. Bye!